Okay, welcome back. Okay, so we were, um, we looked into frame of reference. So let's do a bit of practice. Okay. And uh, uh, what we're going to do is there are, there are certain sentences, statements taken out of uh, certain counseling excerpts. And uh, I've just put that in here. How do you enter into the frame of reference? Okay, here again, please focus on first person responses. First person means you're talking, you, your, your sentence starts with, I mean, you're in a conversation with the person. Okay, so that's what a first person response means. So let's look at um, some examples. And uh, this is practice. So it's just for us to learn. So either you can unmute um, and or you can just type in what you, what you, um, uh, you know, what your response would be. Okay. So the first one, I'm worried sick, I don't sleep well, and I'm afraid for the kids. We're so short of money, and my husband has started to drink again. How do you enter into the internal frame of reference? What would you say that helps the counselee know that you are responding, uh, or you've understood them, or you have entered into their frame of reference as a counselling jargon? Okay, But what it means is just... Uh, entering into their world. What would you say? Okay, this is examples. I mean, sorry, this is a practice, okay? So, um, oh, you must be worried and fearful. All right, so <clears throat> just quickly some responses so that, you know, you, you know what uh, also uh, refining your responses. So, Good job in understanding that they're worried and they're fearful. But it needs to follow with what they are worried or fearful about. Because only when you're able to connect the two are you able to initiate them into a further point of action. Okay? So something like, you know, you seem, you seem really worried and fearful about the future of your family. Okay? So... There is something that is, or, um, or you must be worried and fearful about what's going to happen in future, or um, uh, what, what is going to be the, uh, what is going to be about you tomorrow. So something that really connects to what you are fearful and worried about. That's a good attempt. Uh, yes, dear, the situation looks challenging, and I understand your concern. Okay, so here also, get to she said i'm worried sick okay so what would that mean what would this i'm worried sick mean is that there's a sense of high levels of anxiety there's maybe fear there's a sense of um she's also said you know i don't sleep well uh we're short of money there is a sense of insecurity that she has so express that bring about those words as you are put uh, putting that up okay uh, so someone said, since when, dear? Remember, we are talking about entering into the frame of reference. The questions have a place, but give it time, all right? Uh, you want the person to really talk about what's going on. So express the feeling that they are trying to uh, express to you. Rose, uh, okay, there's another response. I'm hearing you express feelings of helplessness and insecurity about your current situation. Great. Here again, feelings have come about. But you may need to identify one certain aspect of the situation. You feel helpless and insecure about the way that, um, that, that you know, money is being spent because your husband's drinking. So that, that's, that's a situation that you may need to add in. Um, you seem to be in a difficult situation. I would like to help you. Okay. So here again, the, the, the feeling. You should... Try and assess what the feeling is. The, uh, you know, maybe when we use words like it's difficult for you, it's hard for you. Yes, it, the situation is hard, but what we want to capture is the feeling. Okay. Um, what you're telling me, what you're telling me is that you are very troubled about the welfare of your kids and your husband's drinking addiction. Okay, great. Okay. So what I hear you saying is that you are concerned, worried. 
um, troubled about your children and their addiction, his addiction. Okay. It's genuine. You are worried. Yes, it's hard to take. Do you have any thoughts on how you can, how we can solve this? Now, this is a good one. However, we have not spent enough time to, it's called grounding, you know, to really help the person explore more of what she's feeling. We, we do not want to get into solution and solving right at the first minute or when they are talking, okay? So you will want to spend some more time in having them express what else they are feeling and what else they're going through. And this comes later and you're moving them into action a little bit later. But remember that the first point of it is to establish that I have understood what you're really saying or what you're going through. And, and you need to play on that a little bit more. But but excellent, very good efforts. Anybody else? Uh, okay, we'll probably move on to the next one. And uh, you, you all could uh, try, try this one. Okay, so I hate it when the other boys tease me. Don't they realize I have feelings too? What, what would your response be here? I hate it when the other boys tease me. Don't they realize I have feelings too? Responses to this? Come on. So think about some feeling words. What are some feeling words you can use here? You feel alone because they don't understand you. Okay. All right. Uh, more than loneliness. Okay, this is a good one. However, I'm trying to figure out whether what, what, is, what is the actual emotion that he's talking about here. Do not worry. I will show you how to deal with them. Kennedy, I hope that was a joke. <laughs> okay um somebody said oh that can be humiliating i think is what uh oh, that can be really intimidating okay yeah okay good so you feel intimidated when they when they tease you very good okay um there's um it's immature not to think you uh, it's I'm sorry. It's immature not to think that you have feelings. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, this is more about. Okay. So what? What here? What you're stating is the feeling of the people who are teasing him. You want to focus on the person. So, you know, uh, maybe rewording that is good. Okay. Uh, mm, it's not good. Okay. Okay, so we've got to be careful not to probably make a, 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 like like a um, like a like a remark on whether what is happening is good or bad. Okay, but you can say that you sense that it is it's definitely not good because I know in this it it sounds as if it's not good, but you know there may be certain occasions. To you, it sounds really uh, bad, but for them, it may be a good thing. Maybe not in this situation, but so you've got to be careful of, of how you respond to that. Is the counselee a male or a female? Um, I'm. I don't. I, mean, I don't remember actually. But yeah, would that would that matter? Would would that matter to your response? Okay, you feel people are insensitive towards you. Okay, that's good. What you're expressing to me is that boys who um, tease you are insensitive to your feelings, right? Yeah, that's that's a good way. Okay, you are actually um, checking whether that's exactly the way that they're feeling. Uh, there is a feeling of embarrassment. So yeah, you may need to put that out in a in a sentence so that it really helps. That's really inhuman and rude to tease. Okay, now even again here. It's from your frame of reference, all right? Maybe it is true. It's exactly what the person's feeling, but uh, it's 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 more like a judgment that's being made. But what we're looking at is to 
um, uh, to to ed elicit the feeling. So maybe something that um, you feel that that was really rude or inhuman of them to do so. So you're actually checking that. Do, does it feel, because for you, this sounds really inhuman and rude, but you're attempting to check that with them. So maybe a rephrasing that, you know, you feel that it may be really inhuman or rude that the boys are doing that to you. You feel that they've been insensitive to what you've been going through. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. You feel hurt when others tease you and you feel these boys do not care about how you hurt, uh, how hurt you feel. Okay. Excellent. Very good. Okay, maybe we'll take just one more example. Okay, we'll try, try this. Okay. Damn it, the job is difficult enough without having to work with that lazy, good-for-nothing idiot. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I'll, I'll, I'll read out some of the... Uh, I, mean, I think one or two of the things we had someone saying, you shouldn't be calling him names or even swearing. That is a nice of you in the first place. Okay, there was one response like that, that, that we had. Yeah. Um, uh, what, how would you like to respond to this? Okay, yeah. How would you want to respond to this? You know, I, I, I think I, I just want to make a comment here. Recently, something that, um, you know, there was a there was a client who a counselee who sorry, I, I keep using this because you know, in our in our secular education, it's always client client and, and apologies. Okay, so um, there was this uh, counselee who came to me and he's talking about uh, some issue and uh, he used certain swear words, okay? And uh, so, you know, you don't, sometimes you don't even have to say anything because immediately this person said, um, I, I apologize, you you appear like a person who doesn't use any of these words. You're, you always have very edifying words to speak. I'm really sorry. Um, this is not meant to use, just showing you how frustrated I am, you know, so it's not that they are not cognizant about it when they use, you know, bad language or when they use words as, they, as they're speaking. Uh, and that's one of the things that they are also aware of that, uh, um, you know, so it's almost like a plea, you know, even if I'm saying this, please accept me for who I am, you know, don't take me for the words that I'm speaking, right? So, uh, yeah, how do you respond to this? I just wanted to say that on the side. Yeah, last one. Come on. Some, some, you feel your boss makes you do all the work and does not give you enough credit for it. Okay, very good. Very good. All right. Pastor, is it necessary it has to be her, his boss or her boss? Could it be a uh, colleague? Anybody. Yeah, it could be anything. So, uh, uh, yeah, you, you may not really, I mean, the person... May, depending on you know your conversation, you will understand. But uh, uh, it could be anything. Yeah, it's difficult to work and handle this. You must be irritated. Okay, very good. You seem to be stressed out. Okay. All right. So there are a couple of things here. Okay, you seem to be stressed out because your job is hard enough, and you find it extremely stressful working with um, this person. Right. So there are there are a couple of things. OK, so I think you've got the flow. Right. Being careful to enter into the frame of reference of the individual so that you can respond from there. Now we're going to this is going to you know, we're going to be really um, working a lot on this because this your responses are really what matters. Okay, Shay said what you're telling me is that you feel very upset with your colleague with the way he does his work. Right. OK. Good. All right. I like that, uh, Shay, where you, and that's something that you generally do is to, you're checking whether they, whether you have understood them well. And that's why you would say, you know, what I hear you saying is this, and uh, is that right? You know, so, and they'll say, yeah, absolutely. You hit the nail on its head or, or you caught it exactly. And that gives you the confidence that, okay, you've, you've entered into their, into their frame of reference. Okay. Great. Okay, so let's uh, let's move ahead. 
<clears throat> so, um, you know, as we work through uh, through these um, uh, through the um, uh, through the uh, counseling process, we, we've spoken about um, the frame of reference. Um, uh, remember, we, we are now all that we are doing this this entire of understanding of frame of frame of reference um, goes along in whatever approach you use. So, in counseling or in secular counseling, there are very many models that you one would use as they help in counseling. And one of the most um, frequently used model is the the uh, it's called the rational emotive therapy, or it's just called the A B C D E model. Okay, just for easier ones, easier understanding. And this model is based on this idea that how you think, how you feel, and how you act all interact together. We did this partly in our class on emotional wholeness, okay? Now, and, and because this is this is something, uh, you know, Paul talks about, of renewing your mind. And it's just that uh, people in the psychology field has just got some good name to that. But the principle is very, very, uh, is what Paul spoke about, right? Re renewing your mind. So what this model talks about is, it is the thoughts that determine the feelings and thereafter determines our behavior, which again um, strengthens the same very thought. So negative, unrealistic thoughts can cause distress and result in problems. So when a person is suffering from some distress, the way in which they interpret the situation becomes very skewed. And in turn, this has a negative impact on the way they feel and the way they behave. So this model aims people, or even when you're working in, in counseling, to make people aware of when they make negative interpretations and how behavioral patterns will again reinforce this wrong thinking. So it helps uh, helps them to understand and develop different ways of thinking and behaving, which actually will help to reduce these the distress that they're feeling. Okay, so I'm going to help you with this model, and uh, we'll we'll do a couple of examples as well, so that you know we can understand this better. So when we look at this model, it's called the ABCDE model. It represents a tool, and this was created by a person by name Albert Ellis, which was to help counselees identify their irrational beliefs, or self, or or the or the de defeating thoughts uh, that they may be having, uh, and how it becomes dysfunctional in them. Okay, so the A B C D E stands for it's an it's an acronym. Okay, so the A stands for an event for an activating event. It can be a situation, it can be an adversity, it can be a crisis in a personal relationship, it can be a development, uh, it can be anything. It can be a situation that happens, it can be uh, maybe like, for example, the death of a person, it can be marriage, it can be what somebody says, it can be um, being put in a certain situation. It can be job dissatisfaction. It can be absolutely anything. A represents any event, activating event, something that activates this process. Okay. The B stands for the beliefs. The B stands for the, the way they think, the person thinks about this certain event. So they, there are, we, you know, if you notice, there are certain beliefs that we build uh, over over different things, you know, over over these events or an adversity. There are beliefs that we have, and these beliefs can come from very many sources. It can come from your upbringing, from your culture, from your personality, from the word. It can come from many things. So it really depends on where the focus is. So any event brings about a certain thought 
and that creates a certain belief in us as individuals. So that's the B part of it. The C is the consequences. Okay. Now these consequences, it can be uh, emotional consequences. And these thoughts, these beliefs that you have cause certain consequences. So a belief develops an emotional component after it gets practiced repeatedly. Okay, like for example, if you have a belief that you're good for nothing, it is going to bring about an emotional component of underconfidence. And when you practice this belief daily, it becomes almost one to another. It gets related. It becomes like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Okay, the more that you believe that, the more kind of consequence you're gonna you're gonna the more that you believe you don't have a con you don't have confidence there are going to be consequences that are exactly true to that okay d is the dispute where you are disputing or you are negating the b okay which is often those irrational beliefs so it consists of challenging those beliefs as directly as possible okay so D is disputing or negating or challenging the thoughts or the beliefs that you've had about this event so that you are led to E, which is a new way or an effective new belief or an effective new approach to this problem. So it is an effective approach that replaces a certain belief that you've had. So replacing irrational thoughts and fears become what uh, becomes, uh, that's what you're doing in uh, while you're disputing. And it works in developing a new way of thinking and a new way of behavior. Okay. So this A, B, C, D, E is based on this uh, a relationship that helps people to focus on their goals in a structured and a systematic manner. Okay. Remember, not always this is followed in all order. Okay. And sometimes it often is sometimes difficult to distinguish between the consequences and the beliefs. Okay. Because beliefs often tend to be confused with feelings because they all, they work so hand in hand, it gets, um, uh, it often gets confused. Okay, so let's take, let me take an example and, uh, you know, work through this alongside with you. So let's say uh, uh, the, the, the event is maybe a student doesn't get selected uh, in a, maybe in, in, a, in a team, okay, uh, or, or let's say the choir after her audition, okay, the student doesn't get admitted, uh, sorry, selected for the choir in uh, after the audition. So that's the A. The event A has led to the thought, which is B, I have a terrible voice and I'm never going to be good at singing. Okay. So it's the belief that this girl has made for her rejection in the choir. Now this is, becomes the belief, which results in the consequence that the she is sad about her singing and gives up practice practicing instead of continuing to work on it. Okay, so I hope you saw saw the saw the um, flow. Now, uh, so what is the A? The activating event is that she thinks she's made a mistake and that's why she's not chosen in the choir. The belief is that she says she's a failure and that she's not good at anything, and she accepts it. She accepts it quite uncritical. She doesn't even think irrationally about it. She accepts it. So yeah, this is what it is. And the consequence is that she feels awful about this mistake and about herself and maybe leading to sad, depressive thoughts, making it tough for her to even practice or even try again. Okay. Now, when we help a person realize that they are not a victim in this process, but they can do something about this B part of the model, uh, and and that that it is important that they don't accept that this thought is true, okay. And even as I'm saying this, think about all of this scripturally, okay. God's given us gifts and gifts to build us, okay. So she 
what she does doing here is she's accepting that this belief is true that she's good for nothing and but she's when when you open it up to her saying that you know this is what renewing of the mind is thinking about something differently and it's just a thought and you treat it as such but go hold back to the truth all right so when you're doing that let's come to d so you're helping her dispute is your quest helping to question the thought when you question the thought she tells maybe she's telling herself that yeah everyone makes mistake and all because you make one mistake does not mean that you're worthless or good for nothing right so you're disputing that thought all because there's been a mistake in the way she's saying it doesn't mean that one mistake makes you completely not good for anything or outside of your purpose all right and this leads to e which is the new effect she accepts that we everyone makes mistakes replaces this negative belief with a positive thought and she commits to learning from the mistake and trying again in future she says okay everyone makes mistake maybe i should just work a bit more harder okay or i should work on this piece a little more or i should build myself in this key the skill okay so you can see this work happening in d d is the place where uh you help the counselee realize that the thoughts sometimes are simply wrong and your own thoughts or something that that isn't in tune with god's word isn't in tune with you know uh, so there is this all or none law either it's it should be i should be selected all the time or if i'm not selected you know i'm i'm bad forever that these don't determine these these things or these these is uh, events don't really determine who she is so she takes control by rejecting that thought and replacing it with a more positive thought okay uh, i hope that's clear uh, i hope that's understood okay so let me uh, let me i think i i will just go on to one more example and um, okay let's look at another example here okay here is um this is this is about a son and a and a father okay the son returns home and goes to the room without speaking that's the event that's what's happened the 18 year old son has entered the home and does not say anything and goes without speaking so what is the thought that is generated in the mother or the father's mind is he is so ungrateful and discourteous okay and where is this coming from probably from an attitude or a belief or a opinion or as a result of an expectation that there is a belief that says this is how my son is my son is always rude my son is not courteous he's ungrateful so that's what has fed there's a belief that's fed in to this thought and you will see that this thought has a consequent feeling which is a anger there is anger that comes up okay and the first consequence you see is that c1 this consequence is because you're angry you go in and have an argument with the son okay so there is a behavioral consequence as well and that leads to e1 what is the effect both get angry both withdraw and the relationship is damaged but whereas when you are disputing it look at d you are stopping and you are disputing that thought you are reframing the thought or you are renewing your thought and asking yourself am i just going to jump to these conclusions could there be a possible alternative explanation maybe he's had a rough day maybe there's something that's bothering him and that uh, thought or belief changes the consequence so this father goes to the son's room and has a friendly chat with him and not you know doesn't bark with him say you know you don't even say hi to me or you know when you you think this is a hotel you just keep coming in you know those are that's what would have happened in c1 but in c2 maybe it's like son how was your day you seem to be tired you seem to be would you like to talk right so that comes with a change in the belief or change in the thought that leads to a new effect 
there is built, there's a relationship that's built, there's confidence, there's trust, and both seem happy. Okay? Does this make sense? Does this help? Awesome. Great. Okay. Now, now this is very, very useful for us, for each one of us. Okay? Because um, for all, for everything, I mean, every situation in our lives, and especially as believers, I mean, this is, this is what renewing your mind is all about. And this is what you are helping your counselee because very often they have had the thoughts or the beliefs that they come with are so skewed that it affects every part of their um, uh, it, it affects every part of their lives, okay? And helping them see this model really gets them to work on these areas, especially the area of their belief systems and what they are thinking, all right? So what I'd, um, uh, quickly, okay, I'd like maybe one or two of you um, to take us through this model with an example. And I'm sure some of us have already done it, you know, in some way or the other, uh, you know, if we've been listening to sermons and, you know, reading scripture, we've done this in some way of renewing our minds. But now we have a huge, you know, you understand this better. Um, and this is something that we use even with counselees. So would one or two of you just help in sharing um, this model, something that you've used to uh, to work through this? Anybody? Anybody, and I think it'll it's more helpful when when one of y'all talk rather than me bringing up examples all the time, something that's more personal to you. Yeah, the stage is open. We have ten minutes, and uh, let's use this time to hear. Ma'am, uh, I will try. Yes, I'm not sure ahead. if i'm I'm hitting the mark, but something that uh, comes to my mind is that uh, during lockdown when uh, when you know my husband was home and working, was the time when I could understand the kind of work he does in the office because for years he's been going to office, he comes back, he's tired, exhausted, and not even a mood to say good evening, you know when he entered home because of traveling twenty kilometers after the work day's work and I didn't understand like we are fresh home waiting and the person is not in a mood to even say hello and being told to do something or you know he has his frame of mind but during lockdown we saw that the uh, how how they have been you know in the office what kinds of uh, challenges they are facing and how uh, they are you know really working behind those walls and it's such a challenging job for them in a corporate world to, you know, get the orders and get things at the right perspective. And that by, by the end of the day, when they come home, they just want to be themselves and they just want that. So renewing our mind in the sense that when I understood that it is tough for him, he's been speaking all day, he's been, you know, convincing people, fighting for the things and you know, making things happen and, uh, but when he comes home, you know, he just wants to be quiet for a while. A glass of water can help him. And just sit close to him and just, uh, you know, give him a chance to speak if he has something to say. And then uh, when he feels like eating, go and cook chapatis for him and serve him. And uh, sometimes, you know, that helped me understand his perspective and help him. Uh, you know, uh, deburden himself when he's home. So I don't know if I'm I'm answering the question, but something that uh, I have understood through the through these last two years uh, has been significantly changed our relationship as well. Thank so you. So, what was your initial belief uh, of me? What you was yeah, initially, initial? you know, ma'am, we would think that he would come back home. So, uh, when we are happy seeing him, he would be very happy seeing us. <laughs> Okay. And, you know, we have something to tell him and that whatever we want to tell him, you know, he would be happily listening to my story of the day 
but uh-huh. that is the time when i have to wait for him to you know be prepared to listen to me not just that as he enters you know i just want okay quickly go uh, you know take a bath have dinner and then you know i'm free <laughs> <laughs> you know because uh, you're waiting through the day and you you want things to you know wind off quickly then clean up and mm-hmm. you know uh, sit before the television because those days we were fond of television and we just wanted to be uh, mm-hmm. either or he wants to be uh, before the television and i want to sleep so i am upset because the voice is uh, not giving me that time to sleep or something like you know was always there but yeah. slowly we understood that it's not the way my way is not the right way <laughs> right so so i think uh, to help this so she said the activating event is her husband coming back home every evening the, uh, and not maybe talking or not spending time probably the initial belief was you know he's lost in his old way old world he doesn't care he doesn't want to talk okay and the consequent behavior of feeling is a sense of maybe sadness anger irritation but the dispute the d has come in um with with thinking with seeing i mean i think this has happened with some clarity in the way that she the way avni has probably changed the way she's looked at it so she said okay there's a there's a lot of things that he does he just needs some time to relax just time on his own so that's a change in the way that she has you know she's disputed that and consequently it's been a more supportive um uh, uh, experience where she's she's understood to give him that time and then the effect has been a more positive uh, relationship very good apni thank you thank you anybody else pratik you had put up your hand and took it away as fast so was it a mistake yes prabhaka go ahead so uh, this is the event happened to my friend pastor like uh, i've been with him to counseling so he was in love with a girl so mm-hmm. she left him and went uh, he was very broken and all that so we went to this one of pastor so uh, he said to him uh, because she left uh, your value doesn't change he gave an example he said suppose a currency somebody crushes it and puts it in a dustbin it, it doesn't lose its value even if you take from the dustbin and give it to the store it still has a value so somebody leaves you and go it doesn't mean your value is changed it's because they haven't recognized your value so so that thought he he was thinking that he is a failure he was not good and all that. but when they when he said your value hasn't changed because somebody left his thoughts changed and he's happily married and is good now thank you thank you thank you prabhaka great example yeah absolutely good anybody else yes anita go ahead uh it was uh, <clears throat> uh it, it, i will just say that it was about a misunderstanding actually like uh, uh, like my mother in law and uh, uh, there is something happened in between like her son and uh, her and then she was like upset and she told me like uh, how can he abuse me like this and all and i was totally unaware about the incidents what happened actually the word abuse like i was i kept thinking what she means by abuse 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 what what did he do like that and uh, then like uh, believe uh, then uh, what happened is, like i i and uh, i uh, asked her what happened and all that she ex- uh, i asked my husband and he was like uh, there is something happened but it was like she wanted to say uh, that uh, he uh, made me upset and uh, she did not know the right word to use because uh, she just uh, she's uh, she just learning picking up on english and she used the wrong word but when she used that word how much effect it had on my like uh, on my emotion so many r- thoughts uh, ran into my mind but uh, instead of like uh, like uh, take carried away by those thoughts and emotions and keeping it to me i thought of like uh, disclosing it to my husband talking it out with my husband and with her and understanding the situation and then i understood okay her choice of word was wrong it was not what she meant 
then i explained to her though no you should not talk like that you should talk like this it's not this is when you say like that to anybody it will mean like that it would be a totally wrong thing like if i would have i was then after i was thinking if i would have not said like that what kind of personality impact like how i would have uh, her uh, personality in my life i would have like uh, guessed it all wrong and maybe i would have carried her like that only I, and i would have not been so close to her any more it would have like kind of put a partition in between me and my mother in law so that's what happened i don't know whether it is uh, right uh, Ab- in this absolutely so so what you, yours the event was your mother in law sharing something with you the belief was that um, you know that that something is really wrong and the way that she saw it um the consequent feeling was there, but how you disputed is you had a conversation you had a conversation with your husband and you understood what the context was so you were able to change the way that uh, you saw her and consequently that the new effect was the new relationship excellent thank you thank you anita uh, yes harrison i think you have an example all right um good morning from here um this is a very practical example that happened to me you know because for me sometimes you know like you know using what is around me to really explain you know some things okay there was a time you know my pastor invited i am a wife you know for a meeting and um i had you know the media department and um he held the meeting with um my server my wife and in the meeting you know he was now like um giving credit you know to my wife and the rest of them you know it was more like you know discussion was um focused on my wife then at the end of the day he looked at me he said um Harrison i think you know there's a need you know for you to go and upgrade your career upgrade your cv but before he said it he said he does not know whether to say this in front of my wife i was like you know there is a need you know for you to say whatever you want to say in front of her because we are not um different from we are just one so feel free to say what you want to say so when he told me that you know i now asked i said okay what in particular would you want me to go upgrade on so and you know why i asked that question is because when you know a person then you will know how to address your point or something so when you say go upgrade your cv upgrade it on what so when he does not have a particular area on which you know, I should go upgrade my cv then for me the point is baseless so at the end of the day i was like okay what is the talk of this man so i felt hot but i didn't say anything by left and my wife too was hot you know because one it's that you know we started questioning ourselves you know by asking what is the essence of this meeting so at the end of the day i lived with that um, pain for some few weeks that you know my thought you know was or my belief was that maybe i was incompetent to whatever task that was given to me so this thing you know kind of you know you know as funny as it could be it affected me so at the end of the day it's more like you know i had to like you know sit down my wife sat down and she reminded me of who i was you know by telling me that harrison you know there's a need you know for you to understand that everybody's entitled you know to say whatever they want to say but it's a responsibility to accept you know what to hear or what not to hear so at the end of the day when i got that word it was more like you know i had to reflect back on me to tell myself that harrison this is who you are 
So don't be pulled up, you know, by a statement. So from that moment, you know, instead of me paying attention to the words that I had, I had to start reminding myself of who I was. So it was more like, you know, I started speaking it to myself on a daily basis. And that, you know, brought me back, you know, to shape, you know, or to the label, to the way I think. So I think, you know, for me, this could also be an example, you know, to what we are discussing. Thank you. Thank you, Harrison. Thank you so much. Wonderful. I'm so glad that uh, all of you have been able to look back at some part of your lives to see how you will have used this. But if it's a new learning for, for some of you here, um, take this and um, look at ways as to what have been some of your strong beliefs about yourself, about other people, about situations, about God, and uh, dispute that using scripture, using the word, using truth. And you will see how consequently it will change your behavior, change your emotions, change your thoughts, change your experiences in life. All right? Wonderful. Thank you so much uh, for today. Could we have someone close with a word of prayer? Uh, anybody, any of the students uh, who can close with a word of prayer? Someone who hasn't prayed earlier. We'd love to hear your voices. Okay, I'll pray. Yes, Nangi. Thank you. Okay, let's pray. Okay. Heavenly Father, we we thank you, Lord, for the wisdom and knowledge you've imparted. Uh, Pastor, Pastor, Pastor George, and we thank you, Lord, that she is able to impart some knowledge into us, Lord, so that we may be useful in your kingdom, Lord. We may be those vessels of silver and vessels of gold, Lord. And we pray that, that you, you will put us to good use, Lord, so that we, we help usher your kingdom forward. And we thank you, Jesus, that you'll be with us again until we meet again to this class next Wednesday. We pray all this, Father, in your mighty name, Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Mangi. Thank you, everyone. Have a good week ahead. We'll meet you next week. God bless each of you. Bye-bye. Thank you, ma'am. God bless you, too. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.